Hello everyone. Today we are learning about automated cell counter. Name itself suggests that it is used to count the cells. When the whole blood is aspirated through this machine, it uses some distinct principle to count the cells and give the result of the complete blood count in few seconds. So the cell counter counts WBC count, platelet count, RBC count, hemoglobin, RBC indices, HCT, etc. Principles which are used in this type of machines are electrical impedance, flow cytometry and image based principles. First, let's learn the electrical impedance. There is an electrolyte solution which conducts electricity. So, this is the electrolyte solution. And in this solution, the blood cells are diluted. So, red dots are the blood cells. The electrical current is passing through the opening in the electrolyte solution from one electrode to another. So here two electrodes are there and there is a hole in between. So this is the hole. Blood cells are bad conductors of electricity. So whenever the blood cell passes through an aperture or opening, it disrupts the electrical current. So this impedance size is proportional to the size of the cell. So one by one machine counts the number as well as the size of the all cells. This is called the electrical impedance. Let's see the short video about this electrical impedance principle. Here blood is aspirated through the channel. Blood goes through the tubings. It goes through the sensor. Now here in the chamber, one by one cell counting occurs. The blood cells passes through narrow channel it only allows one blood cell to pass at once and as the blood cell passes it gives signals and that translate into the impulses let's learn our second principle that is light scatter cell counting the diluted blood cells travel through the narrow channel and this channel is very narrow and allow the cells to move in the one file only here the cell is struck by the laser or the tungsten halogen beam of light. So the resultant beam is spreaded at an angle. The intensity and the scatter angle of the light beam differ according to the type of the cell. There are two scatters mainly counted. One is forward scatter that is exactly opposite to the light source of, and the photo detector measure it as a size of the cell. And the another is a side scatter. The side scatter shows the complexity of the cells. An example is the neutrophils have more side scatter than the lymphocyte because of their inner complexity including granules. This is the photograph showing the forward scatter and the side scatter and the graph plotted after accumulating all the details. Let's see this short video about the light scatter principle. The blood is aspirated and transferred to the differential count chamber inlet. From this inlet, blood passes through the tubing to reach the counting chamber. In the counting chamber, the laser beam is focused upon the every cell which is passing through the narrow channel. 
forward scatter and the side scatter detail reflects to the photo detector. This photo detector measures and the all details are combined together to plot a graph. The graph has a x axis as a forward scatter and the y axis as a side scatter. So all the WBCs like neutro, lympho, mono are plotted according to the size and internal complexities. The third is image based analysis. This is the most modern techniques available for the differential count. This method involves using the microscope and the statistical classification algorithm to carry out the automated cell detection and counting of the cell by the image analysis. Let's understand the mode of operations. Different type of the machine have the different specifications but usually two basic modes are available in the cell counter. One is manual mode and the second is automated mode. In the manual mode, the technician has to perform 8 to 10 times gentle inversions of the EDTA tube containing blood and then the technician removes the cap of the tube and the present that whole blood to aspirate in the machine probe and the machine probe will aspirate according to the precise volume that is calibrated for the aspiration. After the aspiration, blood goes through the different channels and the tubings and after the short period it gives the reading at the blood cell count according to the machine. In the automated mode the technician places the multiple tubes in the rack that is provided by the manufacturer and that loaded rack is now put into the loader of the machine and by automated system the machine will take one rack after another and it will invert each tube itself before aspirating into the probe. Let's see the short video about the automated mode. The tubes are already loaded into the rack and the rack is passing through the sensor. The machine is inverting gently each tube and now the blood is aspirated through the probe Depending on the principle used for the WBC differential count, the automated cell counter are of two types, 3-part differential and the 5-part differential analyzers. 3-part differentiation is mainly based on the cell size detection. This allows the cell to be divided into the three distinct classification of the size. First is lymphocyte. The type WBC with the size range of 35 femtoliter to 99 femtoliter. Second is mid population, which includes WBC with size range of 100 femtoliter to 200 femtoliter. And third is granulocytes, which includes WBC with the size more than 200 femtoliters. This cell counter does not divide neutrophil, eosinophils and basophil separate. The mid population contains all the cells including monocyte, basophils and eosinophils. This picture shows the graph in which we can identify the three distinct population. First is lymphocytic population, the second is mixed population and the third representing the neutrophils. The second is 5 part differential analyzer. The WBC count is differentiated into the 5 different categories neutrophils, lymphocyte, monocyte, eosinophils and basophils. They are using the multiple principles including electrical impedance, light scattered, fluorescent flow cytometry. 
etc. Some analyzers also show the different count for the nucleated RBCs and they automatically removes the total nucleated RBCs from the WBC count. In the three part analyzers, they are included in the WBC count counted mainly as a lymphocytes. So you have to get the correct WBC count. Some analyzers also give the flagging of the abnormal cells like blast cells and the large atypical cells. The characteristic graph of the 5 part differential is like this. Let's summarize the difference between the 3 part and the 5 part analyzers. In the three part analyzers, the only principles is usually used is electrical impedance while in five part, the combination of the principles are used that are electrical impedance, light scattered and flow cytometry. The three part measures the size and the volume only where the five part measures the diameter, granularity and complexity. The three part includes the lymphocyte, mid population and granulocytes and the five part include all five different types of the WBCs that are neutrophils, lymphocyte, monocyte, eosinophils and basophils. The platelet is derived from the impedance method in the three part. The some five part analyzers count the optical platelet count in addition to the impedance platelet count. This optical platelet count help us to differentiate between the RBC fragments and the platelet. When your cell counter does not give the correct WBC count in case of the nucleated RBC present in the peripheral blood, then one must do the correct WBC count manually by following formula. The corrected WBC count is equal to the observed total WBC count upon NRBC in percentage plus 100 whole into 100 where the NRBC percentage are the nucleated RBC per 100 WBCs. While operating the analyzer, you should know the rule of 3. This rule is mathematical check to ensure the hemoglobin, hematocrit and the RBC count values given by the analyzers are correct. In optimal conditions, when the person's hemoglobin is normal, RBCs are normocytic, normochromic, then RBC counts digits into 3 approximate equal to hemoglobin and hemoglobin into 3 which approximately equals to hematocrit value. Example is when RBC count is 5 into 10 raised to 6 per microliter, hemoglobin is 15 gram per dl and HCT is 45 percentage. Here if you do calculations, RBC counts digit that is without the power is equal to 5 into 3 is equal to 15. So hemoglobin comes here 15 and if you count 15 into 3 that is hemoglobin into 3 is equal to 45 that here HCT comes 45. So this is a rough check of your analyzer's performance. However, this is not always true when the patient has hemoglobinopathies and other disorders. So this rules only applies to nearly healthy person's blood. Let's discuss the basic quality control methods which applies to almost all hematology analyzers. First is maintenance methods. The technician should do daily maintenance including the daily shutdown, routine cleaning and probe cleaning. It also includes the weekly and monthly maintenance and the preventive maintenance. The preventive maintenance is yearly usually done by the engineers of the manufacturers. Second is daily background check. It is very important. Some analyzer gives the tab for the background check in their software of the machine. But if it is not present, the technician can perform it by running the distilled water as a sample. And the technician should check the results. 
there should be no cells in that result or the result must be comparable with the given standard values of the background check by the manufacturers if the background check shows more cells then it will give the erroneous results in the patient samples so the root cause analysis should be done promptly for this type of the errors the third quality control mechanisms is the running the quality control the two types of the quality controls available commercially first is manufacturers provided and the second is third party quality control according to the machine you are operating or the purchasing the company will provide the quality control sira for that analyzer like low count quality control high count quality control and the normal quality control they also provide certain range for that particular quality control while you are performing the controls on the daily basis you can check your analyzer performance by the implementing the waste card qc rules the third party controls it means that the buyer and the manufacturers are not involved in the qc product there are some qc suppliers available that you can use their qc material in the different instrument of the manufacturers it is the ideal type of the quality control the qc process is the same as mentioned before depending on the workload of the machine the technician can use this quality controls one times per day two times per day or three times per day and it is ideal to use at least two levels of the control at a time these are the list of the manufacturers of the hematology analyzers they are abbott diagnostics beckman colter arba diagnostic horiba siemens sysmax mindray these are the references i hope that this video helped you to increase your knowledge about hematology analyzers Thank you for watching.